How do folks and welcome to uh, the sort of autopsy, the uh, the debrief, if you uh, would like to call it that, of uh, the performance of the big antennas uh, versus the shorter ones on that last antenna shootout. So uh, yes, it did um, come as a surprise, but not as a total surprise to be honest, because at the end of the day, that uh, roof basket, um, SWR wise, I had to even go out and double check uh, with one of the big twigs that the SWR hadn't gone out of kilter. I thought, well, perhaps I, I, when I put the uh, seven foot fire stick on, it disturbed the mount and I lost lost the ground connection or something like that. No, all absolutely perfect. So uh, there we go. Um, so what, what term could possibly have gone wrong? My guess, I think it could have been several factors, um, but certainly, on that RAV4, that roof basket's on there all the time, that is it. There's no point in me taking those um, big antennas uh, with me. I may as well, at most, screw the five foot um, fire stick on the top. So uh, anyway, um, I've just been out now and, and chucked a couple of twigs on there, so I'll show you that in a minute. But um, yes, um, one other thing um, could be the radiation pattern is, is more definite with the uh, the bigger antennas maybe um, when you well for example I, I took um, a considerable amount of time not drawing this uh, drawing of um, a radiation pattern so um, that is uh, a sky looking down view on the footprint of a car so that's the front and that's the rear and uh, what tends to happen is the signal will follow the metal. So if you put your antenna at the back, it would tend to throw the signal forward. Likewise, if you fix your antenna on the um, ball bar, rhubarb, call it what you will, it will tend to throw the signal backwards. Now, if you've got your antenna mounted low on the vehicle, that's even worse because if you then have an antenna on your uh, ball bar and it throws the signal backwards it hits all the sort of superstructure of the vehicle and your radiation pattern goes all over the place but uh, in my case it is high up on the roof so uh, we are in the in the situation where this sort of radiation pattern would uh, be the case so perhaps the different antennas the bigger ones this has more of an effect and it does have a noticeable effect I've been on DX nets before I can't hear someone I spun the car around they can hear me I can hear them so it, it does have an effect antenna location is there roughly slightly towards the rear of the vehicle on the side of the uh, roof basket so um, I will be getting out um, worse in this direction and sort of better optimum in that direction as you see away from the antenna in the direction of the metal. So perhaps on the big twigs, it's more pronounced. I think uh, I got a, a field strength meter somewhere. So uh, if uh, I can find that and find a little antenna, I could fashion a little antenna um, for that. Um, I might do a little field strength test to see if that is the case. I have noticed in the past that uh, when I've done a back-to-back -back test with a base loaded antenna and a top loader, the uh, top loader does seem to, even in, in a, an off-centre sort of um, mounting position, the top loader does seem to be more omnidirectional, more than the, the base load. So uh, I don't know, maybe that was something to do with it. Um, on top of that, it's uh, a matter of the, uh, the roof basket itself, perhaps those really big twigs, um, it is indeed, this is the one I really suspect that um, that um, basket is not good enough uh, a, a counterpoise or a, a ground plane to really let them flourish and it's long been known that um, people say oh, my tank whip is faulty because I can't get the SWR down um, there's not a lot to go wrong with a tank whip it's just there's, there's nothing to go wrong with it so it can't be faulty as such unless it's completely the wrong length out of the factory um, it is to do with um, needing a, a good ground plane it's got no coils or anything like that to help with the matching or the rest of it it is what it is it's a straight uh, piece of metal a quarter wave long so um, even though the SWR was fine uh, but we all know that SWR is not the whole story in fact it's, it's really um, you could put a dummy load 
uh, up in the air and it'll have perfect SWR but you get out like crap on it. Um, SWR is not everything but the SWR is fine, it's been fine, I've double checked it in, uh, it's all fine on all the uh, the big twigs so uh, it wasn't that, it hadn't gone out of tune or the mount hadn't gone wonky. Uh, it looks like it's a case it doesn't like that roof basket, perhaps it's acting like a capacitor or something like that but it's long been known that um, these tank whips they do need a really good uh, connection either on a fixed mount or if you do have to go down the route of a mag mount these triple magnets not to keep it on the roof while you're trying to drive along with this thing but to give it a really solid capacitive connection through the mag base to the body of the vehicle and uh, people um, well for example my Doblo that uh, roof on that is, is like tinfoil whereas the roof on my Polo is much more solid so you can even get variations from vehicle to vehicle but uh, that's what I think it is. So I won't abandon the, uh, the long, big antennas. I'm going to give them another chance. And uh, that will be on top of the polo on the fixed mount. OK, the mount is uh, more towards the rear. But if they're that dysfunctional, they're no good to me in a, a sort of real world situation anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll give them a go. I will go out at some point if I uh, fancy um, braving the traffic and uh, take a few twigs and uh, give those big twigs another chance on a fixed mount on a bare roof with no roof racks, roof boxes or anything like that. But uh, on the Toyota now, I know that it's no use or no point in me putting a big twig on there because um, in some cases they're actually down on, uh, on the little, uh, little twigs. Five foot um, fire stick I think was slightly on top from uh, shootout number three um, but um, less wall and modulator half a needle's width in it um, triple top low half there's only half a needle's width in about three of the sort of four stroke five foot uh, antennas above that seven foot fire stick um, didn't really uh, that was the biggest disappointment because I thought in a real world situation um, when you're out in in the countryside you do get um, brick walls dry stone walls hedges and I thought being a, a, a long top loaded antenna it may tend to radiate more from the top and get over those uh, obstacles but uh, it was the best of the big twigs the worst of the big twigs which is why I suspect the uh, the issue with the, uh, the sort of ground plane element of it all the uh, quarter wave was uh, the worst I think it only put out an S4 which um, unless there was some local something going on I don't know um, but um, I don't think there was nothing to yank the signals down or go up and there wasn't any sort of tractors appeared in the field or anything like that so um, that's all I can do to explain it really so um, to prove that theory I'm gonna have to go out again and do an antenna shootout number four anyway so um, there we go so I'll cut in a few clips now of me uh, trying some different antennas um, trying to choose what to use on a sort of daily basis etc on the two vehicles and uh, I'll cut back in to uh, do a few concluding points. SWR on the two foot um, Superflex has gone off the scale, hence the uh, total lack of signal. Just removing the spring. My guess it's gone in there again, like uh, another one and the four foot Superflexi. So uh, all that's left to do is to find out how far this will fly when thrown like a javelin, because it's certainly not something that's going to end up on there because it's just not strong enough. So uh, let's have a go get the balance about 20 meters okay up on there now is the little uh, it's like a three foot dial match so I'm just going to tune that one in that's going to be the sort of daily driver type thing for car convoys and for us just to call back to the base station from the shop so uh, I'm going to tune that one in I've got no doubt it'll tune down because it's really easy with those tuning rings and then um, I'll show you what I've decided for my sort of uh, touring stroke um, light DX type antenna
Okay, the um, SWR is higher on channel 40 than it is on channel 1, so I need to electrically shorten this antenna, and the way you do that on these type of things is to move the rings up, which gives the effect of shortening the antenna. So uh, it's a fair way out, so I'll give it a couple of turns, recheck. When I'm done, I'll either just take those rings up to stop them moving, or um, dab a bit of um, clear varnish or nail varnish on there, just a dab to stop them moving around. Okay, yes, hot and sweaty. Um, band center, SWR curve, remember. Band center, 1.1 to 1. At each end, channel 1 was 1 1.3. Balanced up channel 40, 1.3. So, uh, that's a sort of um, daily driver, so to speak. Right, next up, I'm going to... Uh, probably go for the Les Wallen modulator as a good all-rounder, a touring antenna and um, because there's not a lot in it probably the uh, sort of static mobile DX. No point putting the big twigs on this one because you've seen the results uh, for whatever reason they just ain't doing it on this uh, motor roof basket arrangement and possibly because it's off to one side and getting a dysfunctional radiation pattern so uh, we'll see what we can do with this one okay that uh, didn't need any adjustment it looks perfect for 80 channels i've only got a 40 channel radio in the car but shall i want to set up an 80 channel in there for a bit of uh, static mobile dx it's ready to go um slightly higher on 40 than on one which would indicate it would need shortening a little bit but it's already at the bottom of its travel so unless i want to start cutting the whip but we're talking 1.2 to 1 at um top of the shop channel 40 uh, 1.1 to 1 at uh, band center channel 20 and um, at channel 1 27 decimal 60125 no movement according to that meter a flat one to one okay the other alternative and I could leave this on here all the time it's so damn tough is the um, full-sized Springer um, some people don't like them, but um, full-size ones, I've never had any problems. Um, I haven't um, had this one on this vehicle in a shootout yet, so I would have to do a comparison versus the modulator. A mini shootout. So, uh, yeah, I'll just check the SWR, but um, that one is a possibility. And, um, yeah, whichever one knocks back the strongest signal out of the two will be the sort of touring stroke daily driver and if there's not a lot on it between uh, this and uh, say the triple top load or whatever um, I'll just go with this uh, full time for pretty much everything um, so yes uh, the only thing with the modulator with the long loading coil it does put it up well that must be over seven foot there but the whip is very um, flexible so the whip will almost go horizontal before it uh, it stresses the uh, loading coil. But um, if I went with the modulator, I would have to make sure I don't go under any... I think I'd be right in branches, but uh, certainly low car parks and stuff, I'd have to watch it. This would just about take anything. Apart from, um, on one occasion, I did have an instance where a thick twig got caught in there. And as it straightened up, it caught the twig, and as the car moved on, Luckily the twig was rotten and it pulled off. Otherwise, if you get like a small branch or twig caught in the coil, it could be nasty if it's uh, strong enough to uh, give your antenna a yank. Could damage the um, antenna. Unlikely. Most likely damage the mount and perhaps even um, do something to your roof rack or, uh, or basket. So anyway, let's stick that on and check the swar. Okay, SWR is fine. If I wanted that to cover 80 channels, I would have to make that slightly longer. But I think it's um, on the top of its travel because in the past I've had to cut the whip because I did have a quick disconnect on this one before. But as it is, it's not bad. Um, channel 40, it's 1.1 to 1. 
uh, channel 20 it's uh, between 1.1 to 1 and 1.2 to 1 and down on channel 1 it's just over 1.2 to 1 so it may even stretch to the 80 channels uh, in its present state of tune 40 channel radio in there no problem at all it's pretty damn good so uh, yes that is the choice on uh, this vehicle um, I need the five foot fire stick elsewhere but on special occasions that one was the best performing in the last shootout so uh, yeah I could take that one up if I was going up white horse blorange wind green something like that but uh, we're talking needle width so uh, generally I would have a small antenna namely the um, little dialer match on here all the time and uh, if we're going off touring or need a bit of extra distance or making a stop on a hill for a bit of static mobile stuff either the modulator which is the one I actually fancy to be honest um, or the full size springer looking at some antennas on the polo uh, up there at the moment is the two foot super flexi I've checked the SWR on this one this one is okay low down vehicle I've never actually hit anything with this yet apart from a, a little brush on the uh, the low hedge on the way around this little corner not too far from here but uh, as yet it's not done any damage but I have to say I have lost confidence in these antennas good little performance uh, for the size good little performer for the size but um, yeah I could put an SWR meter in line to check it constantly but uh, I don't fancy that on a fixed mount um, I think it should be reliable enough not to uh, have to have a meter in line all the time so uh, looking to swap this one out really for something else so I've uh, been thinking about a few things so uh, let's have a look <clears throat> the little DV27 Now this one I have used on the way back from the mountains because I know I'm not going to hit anything such as low branches on the route that I take say from uh, Weinvac on the way back the roads are fairly wide so you don't tend to hit anything on a vehicle this height uh, there's a possibility it would but it's a tidy performer and certainly I would use that um, in uh, most circumstances but again I don't want to put a spring on the bottom of that and I don't think it would take too much for that to shatter crack and shatter should I hit something so um, don't know next one here's the so we've got two of these Les Wallens. I'm thinking about putting one on the uh, Toyota. That's still nice and low. That's not going to hit anything. And the whip is very flexible. So, um, yeah, I've no doubt. I've tried uh, modulators on it before. SWR is sweet ass so uh, that's a possibility that doesn't look too bad looks a bit like a bumper car with that length of twig on the back but hey ho the car's crap anyway so um if they're not laughing at the car they can laugh at the twig instead can't they so there's that one very hot today so apologies for being a little bit out of breath i'll pop back to the shed in a minute and um, grab uh, a cold um drink some description Or I do again have a full sized Springer. Second one, this one again is, uh, well, it's actually blue to match the car, and that coil doesn't short out unless it's literally bent over on itself, which um, most other antennas would break in that situation. So uh, I'm not going to hold that against it. But in situations like that on the shorter um, Springer with a tighter coil, then these can short out and cause SWR problems. but not on this one and as we've seen in uh, the shootout with this one on not the last shoot of the one before this was um, putting a decent signal out so um, yeah 
Yeah, what's your reckon? It's all right now. It could be a fit and forget. The only other thing with these, well, most that mobile antennas, unless they're really stiff, as they sort of get going as you go along the road, if you're talking mobile over any sort of distance, your signal will be going whoa, whoa, in uh, harmony with the uh, the wobbling antenna. And that would do, and the Les Wallen, that would do for a bit of static mobile stuff as well. In fact, the DV27, there was a, a video last time I went up the Blorange, got into Italy on spread, key, no problem with that. Thinking about chucking a couple of these in though, put one in the Toyota, put one in here. They're short enough to um, just sit along the back seat, stick them down behind the back seat or drop them on the floor. You don't have to sort of wedge them down between the seats, short enough for that being just over four foot odd. Now the shorter twigs, anything less than the five foot fire stick, this was the best performer pretty much so um, static mobile shouldn't be too bad should it looks nice you could drive with that as long as you're absolutely sure that you weren't going to hit anything because you've got even on this low down car now you've got a fair bit of height up there that must be getting that sort of uh, eight nine feet to the top could put spring on it But, um, like I showed you before, so it's not that heavy for the type of twig, but if it does take a hit, it can get a little bit unwieldy. Doable though. But uh, considering we're only talking uh, needle widths between uh, these antennas, is it worth it? Or shall I go with Springer or Modulator? What I will have to do, I haven't on this vehicle or the other one done a back-to-back -back test Springer versus Modulator. So um, I think I would need to do that and decide based upon that. Okay, let's get back to that shed for a cold drink. Catch you in a bit. Right, so so there we are. That's the, uh, the sort of choices that um, I've got. I think so. Uh, as it stands, I'm thinking. Well, I've walked away now with the um, blue Springer on top of the Polo and the black Springer on top of the uh, Rav Four. Now I'm going to do a back-to-back -back test on the Rav Four between. And I might do it on the Polo as well, actually, because both those twigs. Um, I'm, I'm undecided whether to run with the Les Waller modulator or the Springer on both vehicles. It's a sort of touring type um, antenna or because there's not much in it certainly on the RAV4 there's no point in me putting up um, big twigs on that they just don't don't work on the top of that roof basket um, I'm, I'm going to do a back-to-back -back. I'll start off with the RAV4 back-to-back full-size Springer versus the modulator the winner is the sort of touring antenna um, I'll do the same so I don't think I've ever done a back-to-back -back test between the modulator and the springer on either vehicle so uh, pretty much I'll do that if there's a definite winner I will go with the uh, the winner if they're exactly the same I think I'll go with the springers because they're just so damn tough and maintenance free so there we are okay at the test location that's the same test location as I think she's open to so uh, this is the uh, little uh, three foot dryer match up on the top. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Righto, antenna number two under tax this evening for the uh, shootout is the uh, Les Warren modulator. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now on the uh, mount is the uh, full size Springer. 
and it will be staying on there until we get home. So here we go, from the same location, uh, modulator, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I think um, on the uh, RAV4 though, I'll go with the little, um, I think it's a three foot dyna match because it's uh, it's so discreet, it just looks like a, um, like a business uh, PMR type um, antenna, something like that. Um, and um, it, it's because it's a small twig, um, I've tested it before, the range on that one is, is actually one of the worst performing antennas. But that's all I want really for the situation that I need it for is either car to car when the cars are, are a matter of no more than um, half a mile apart or when I go to the shops and I can call back to the base and um, stopped outside the shop and I said I could say uh, here um, shall I get a, a dozen eggs or shall I get two dozen that type of thing I don't want um, wide range for that in fact, uh, now I've got the Galaxy uh, antenna up outside instead of the loft antenna, I've actually been putting the um, radio up there. It's an old radio I've got in use. And it's still got the um, old 10 dB attenuator switch to knock the power from uh, 4 watts down to 0 0.4. So I've been knocking it down to 0 0.4 and uh, with a, a sort of 10 one antenna on the vehicle, it, uh, it gives me enough range but not too much if you get too much it's not being anti-social but if you get too much range you get sort of people calling in saying um oh give us a radio check or you, you start getting skip coming in and things like that but if you get two sort of average sort of um installs you, you tend to not have private comms but it's getting on that way sort of the same as farmers um they got a, a, a poor um setup but it covers the scope of their land so they can shout out to the tractors the tractors can call, talk to each other without sort of interruption so uh, that's what i'm after there um same if my women get i don't know you don't hear many uh, lady breakers on the air um because um i would say that uh, um people are um it's hard to describe they can they can get a bit smarmy uh some of the blokes they hear a lady breaker on there and um my missus is, is not confident on the radio anyway um, and I remember a situation um, when we were on the coast and uh, I used to get out into Wales really well. I was calling out for ages for a radio check and just installed a radio in the house calling out for a radio check uh, no answer and I said well I want to hear what that sounds like that radio so I said I'll go down to the car and I said to my missus just uh, and I said, I picked a completely random channel I said give me a shout so I can hear what that radio sounds like. So I go down to the car, and I've been calling out for ages. Mrs. goes on there. Um, hello, um, what's it? Blah blah blah. One two three four five five four three two one. And um, I said, yeah, sounds great, thanks. And uh, as soon as she shouted out, there was blokes calling back, um, going, "Hello, love, how are you? Not heard you before. I'm so nice, don't you?" Uh, that was supposed to be a Welsh accent, I don't know how good or bad it was, but uh, that's what it was supposed to be because um, that's all we could hear really, because where we were positioned, uh, we had fantastic range across the water to uh, Wales, uh, but nothing inland into uh, our side of the water, so to speak. So yeah, completely random channel, something like Channel 4, nobody ever goes on that. As soon as you shout out once, I've been calling out for ages on uh, one nine for a radio chat, no answer. But as as, so we don't really want that type of thing to happen. So we're deliberately trying to limit the range on that. So um, I was digressing there. But uh, that's why I want sort of a 10-1 antenna on the vehicle. And uh, I knock the power down on the uh, on the home base for that reason. So I think I'll go with the dialer match uh, as the sort of daily on the RAV4. And uh, Springer for sort of touring around. And uh, because the big twigs just don't perform... Um, I won't bother with uh, any of this tank whip or, or seven foot fire stick lark. Uh, might take the five foot fire stick along now and again because that was slightly up. Um, but um, yes, so really I've just got to decide for the sort of touring antenna, static mobile antenna. I think I'll chuck a, a, a four foot triple top load in anyway. 
but um, I just got to do a back-to-back -back between the modulator and the Springer and decide on those two. Same goes with the Polo, except with the Polo, I've still got hopes that those big twigs are going to perform. So Polo, it's got no um, clutter on the roof. It's uh, a straightforward drilled and, and fixed mount straight through the roof. So I will give them another try. Probably um, it'll have to wait a while. Um, I'll do something like uh, I'll go up to a high spot and uh, call back to the base and uh, do a sort of um, I'll mimic a DX situation. I'll pop, pop up mid midweek or something up to uh, or pop up is bloody miles away up to Westbury White Horse or summer or over to um, Blorange or something and uh, call back to the, the home base and uh, give those big twigs another chance. So there we go. Um, I think it was a combination of the big twigs being more directional and I think it was mainly due to the fact that they don't like that uh, extra little bit of uh, metal between them and uh, the vehicle body and indeed the earth itself. That's my guess. That's why I thought, why I think they performed so badly. Okay, um, a couple more slurps of coke. I'll catch you on the next one.